hello dear students i am samir velankar i welcome all of you to this video which is on the topic linear queue data structure now two types of queue we will see in this series which is linear queue as in this video and circular queue in the next video now q is first in first out data structure that means whatever you put first in the queue whatever you insert first in the queue will be always taken out first for example imagine you insert 10 then 20 then 30 in the queue and suppose you want to take out something from the queue that is delete from the queue then always 10 will be deleted first because 10 was inserted first then 20 will be deleted and finally 30 will be deleted so the elements are always deleted in first in first out manner let us see how to build such a queue data structure to build a queue very easily we declare an array an array of let a be the name of the array we will declare a constant called size as written at the bottom here constant size is equal to 5 so we are having an array of size phi. So elements of the array as you see are ranging from 0 to 4. So it is a fixed size array. Obviously array is always having fixed size. Now along with the array we are having two integers. Front and rear shown over here are simple integer variables and front and rear will in telling us that where is the front most element in this queue and where is the rearmost element in this queue. As an example, right now you watch that the array is not containing any values, or rather, we have not stored any values in this array. So we can say that this queue is empty. Whenever the queue is empty, we will always initialize both front and rear these counters these integer counters to minus 1. Minus 1 is logical because by making front and rear minus 1, what we are telling is that even 0th position, even the 0th position is not filled. So forget about next positions like 1, 2, 3 and all that. If 0th position itself is not filled, then front and rear are before this position. That is front and rear are minus 1. So remember, whenever the two counters front and rear are minus 1, then it means that the queue is empty. So the queue shown here with front and rear as minus 1 is an empty queue. Two types of operations are possible on a queue data structure. Insert operation, which will add a new value in the queue and delete operation which will always take out or remove the frontmost element from the queue because queue is first in first out. Let us see algorithm to insert an element x in the queue. So we have written an algorithm insert and x written in the bracket is the element or the value that we are inserting. Let us assume that x is 10 so we want to insert 10 in this queue. Now the insert function is having a if else as you see and if the if is true then we say that q does not have any place any more place to store any new value. We call such situation as q over. By the way my appeal to all of you is initially for a few, a few repetitions you just ignore the if. You just think as if the if is not written. We will see this if whenever it comes to the point. Okay. So right now you have your eyes on the else. Okay, we are inserting 10. Assume that else itself runs always. So in the else, the first line written is rear should become rear plus 1. Rear is increased by 1. So current value of rear you observe in the diagram 
current value of rear is minus 1. So this value minus 1 is increased by 1, so rear will become 0, isn't it? So what does that indicate? If the rear becomes 0, you see that rear is now becoming 0. If the rear becomes 0, then we are going to put the new value 10 at place 0 because rear is 0 in the array. In the array, we will put 10 at 0th place. So that's the next line we have exactly written. A square bracket rear should become equal to x. That means A of 0 because rear is 0. So A, A rear is becoming 10. And actually, you know, that's it. Insertion is over. See, you have inserted 10 in this array at place 0. But there is something more to it. You see, actually, I repeat, this line rear is rear plus 1. And this line, a rear each line x, is the insertion algorithm. That's it. Insertion algorithm summarizes to these two lines. But there is more to it. There is a if after this. We are asking if the counter front is at the moment minus 1. As you see, the counter front is really minus 1 at the moment because we initialized it to minus 1 early. So, this if is true, if front is minus 1, then front is forcibly made 0. So, front which was minus 1, I will erase the value of the front. Now front is no more minus 1, but front becomes 0. And after that, else ends and insert ends. Have a look at this insert function and logically you, you just think of this. That front was minus 1, agreed? I, I will redraw. was the 0th position, it was not filled. Even 0th position was not filled. And both front, front and rear were minus 1. Now what happened, you know, when we were inserting 10, we said rear should increase. So front and rear were at minus 1 before 0. We increased rear. So rear became 0 and 10 was inserted at rear place. Problem is front remained minus 1. Although rear became 0, front remained minus 1. Well, this is an unstable queue. How can you say that frontmost person, listen very carefully, how can you say that the frontmost person is at minus 1th place and rear, that is last person, is at the place 0? Because minus 1 is not any valid place. So we say, if front is minus 1, then make it 0. Now, where is the front person? At place 0, because front is 0. And where is the rear person, that is last person? At place 0, because there is only one person in the queue. You can easily read the if statement. I'll just make some place again. Okay. You can easily read this if statement which I am ticking in English like this. If this is first insertion, then make front equal to 0. So how does our C program come to know that this is the first insertion? Simply by asking front, are you minus 1? If you are minus 1, then we had just now initialized front and rear and we are in the insert algorithm for the first time. So if front is minus 1, then make it 0. I am sure you understand that the if that I have marked, if front is minus 1, then make it 0, will run only once. I mean, it will become true only once. It will be checked every time, but it will be become true only once during first insertion. Let's see. Suppose you call insert second time. Let's say we want to insert 20. So how is the statement in the else going to run? First line in the else is rear is increased by 1. So rear which is 0, rear which is 0 will now become 1. Rear is 1 means that you are ready to insert a new value at first place. 
so rear decides the place of insertion rear decides the place of insertion so first place is going to store the value that's what we have written in the, in the second line of else a of rear becomes x so a1 becomes 20 and that's it that's the insertion over but we have an if which will be false definitely we are asking is front minus 1 which is not so front is 0 so no change made to any counter front remains 0 now have a look at the q i will redraw the q at the bottom the q is having two values 10 and 20 stored at 0 and 1 position by the way who is front over here 10 is front 10 is the first person at which place at place 0 so front has to be 0 isn't it you will agree and who is the last person who had joined the q 20 joined the q last where is he standing 20 is standing at first place so rear has to be 1 this is a consistent q isn't it believe me if you would have kept front as minus 1 did no change to front during first insertion if you did not forcibly make front equal to 0 during first insertion then front would have remained minus 1 and rear would keep on increasing due to each insertion and this will look really really bad q where front remains minus 1 and rear keeps increasing needless to say now that every new insertion like if you insert insert 30 now rear will increase and new value will go at rear place so what if you insert 30 then 40 and then 50 so rear by this time rear would be becoming 4 because each insertion increases rear by 1 and does not change front at all now watch the queue q is having five elements and the frontmost is 10 which is standing at place 0 so front is 0 correct and the last element of the queue is 50 it is standing at fourth place so the rear is 4 correct this this is how insertion algorithm runs but now suppose you insert one more element try to insert 60 in this queue do you agree that there is no place in the queue check the array all the elements of the array are full so there is no place in the array if you try to insert 60 then the if statement now look at if in the insert function the if statement written is is rear equal to size minus 1 recall size is a constant which is 5 we are asking is rear check the value of rear rear is 4 is it really equal to size minus 1 that is 5 minus 1 which is 4 and this is true what it means is even the fourth position that is last position of the array is filled so we don't have any place so we will print q overflow and we will not land in else else will be skipped and insertion will fail we will not be able to insert any new value so that's insert function of the linear q you watch that your teacher has not yet explained why such a queue is known as linear queue. Why the word linear? I will come to the point, trust me, at the end of this particular video. But it's time to see delete function now. Let's have a look at delete. To understand delete, you imagine that the queue currently stores 10. 20, 30, 40, 50. So all the elements of the queue are filled. There is no more place for any new value in this queue. So what should be the value of the front? Front should be 0, as you see. 10 is the frontmost, which is at 0 at the place. And rear must be 4, as you see. The last element is 50, standing at 4th place. Now, just imagine you call delete function. Okay. Now, delete function, uh, now note that just don't uh, be in a hurry to come to any conclusion. This delete function is wrong. Okay. That's my habit. I, I, I like to write something wrong so that you understand the importance of something which is correct. Okay. But let's see delete function. 
the delete function is first of all going to check under flow you see the if statement if front is minus 1 then print q is underflown by q underflow we mean that there is nothing to delete the q is empty and it seems logical if front is minus 1 then frontmost person itself is not there because minus 1 is not a valid place in the array so if front is minus 1 we know that we are still at the initial value of the front which we started off at the beginning of the program we made front and rear both as minus 1 recall so if front is still minus 1 then there is nothing in the queue so we are going to print underflow and else will be dropped and we won't be able to delete anything because queue is empty but at the moment you watch for the given queue which i have drawn this is not empty because front equal to minus 1 is false as you see front is zero at the moment so deletion is possible so we land in else from now onwards my appeal to all of you is you every time you run delete you directly come to else because if is going to be false for a long time so what are we doing in else is we are pulling out a front and storing it in x this line becomes i am writing it x becomes a of 0 because front is 0 and a of 0 is nothing but 10 so 10 is loaded in temporary variable x and now now comes the big point check the diagram you can imagine that 10 is deleted because we have pulled out 10 pulled out 10 in a temporary variable x so we want now 20 should be appointed as frontmost yeah but natural if the frontmost person is deleted if the frontmost person is deleted then the next person should become frontmost but how will you do this you will simply say the counter front which is 0 should now become 1 so if the front becomes 1 due to front is front plus 1 as written in the delete function you will see that obviously 20 will become the front most hence front equal to front plus 1 will make front from 0 to 1 and finally we will return x recall that x was 10 we had pulled out 10 in and stored in x so we are returning 10 back to calling function and uh, i think i have explained this in stack uh, chapter also that we are claiming that 10 is deleted yes i said several times that 10 is deleted even i striked out 10 but you understand this is an array and in an array you don't have an eraser you don't have a facility to free this memory by calling library function like free so although we are saying that 10 is deleted 10 is still there and in the zero place but then it is logically deleted because note where is the front counter front is 1 and rear is 4 observe the new value of front front is 1 rear is 4 so the queue is ranging from first to fourth place as if zeroth place is something in which we are not interested okay so now you consistently keep running the delete function with me and trust me there is some problem with this delete which we are going to deal with very soon so let's call delete again what do you think who should be pulled out now obviously 20 so directly land in else in else we are saying x is equal to a front but observe a front means a1 because front is 1 now and a1 is 20 so 20 gets loaded in temporary variable x and the next line is front becomes front plus 1 so front which was 1 will now become 2 that means we have appointed second element that is 30 as the front most as we are claiming that 20 is pulled out and last line is obviously return x which returns 20 to calling function so if you keep calling this delete you know next time 30 will be deleted isn't it 30 is deleted and 40 is appointed as frontmost that is front will become 3 then 40 is deleted isn't it then 50 is appointed as frontmost so front will become 4 now starts the fun part 
front is now 4. So what happened, you know, we have deleted 10, 20, 30, 40. And now the queue contains only one value, 50. So front and rear both are 4. Yes, you must agree, if there is only one person in the queue, front and rear will be equal. Isn't it? Now what if you delete, you are deleting this 50 also. Now come on, if you are deleting this 50 also, then after deleting 50, the queue is going to become empty. So if the queue is becoming empty after deleting 50, it is your responsibility to actually make the queue empty by making front and rear back to minus 1. This you will have to do. Programmer in his or her code, after deleting the only element left out, 50, should initialize front and rear back to minus 1. So what is my point is that in the delete function, before you say front is front plus 1, see, it will be so silly, isn't it? So silly that after deleting 50, if the programmer says front is front plus 1, how silly it is. How can be front equal to 5? We just can't blindly say that because we are deleting someone, next person will be front most. Hello, next person has to be available, correct or not. So you just can't blindly say after deleting a value front plus plus front should become front plus one. Well, before you say that front is front plus one, it is quite logical to say, to ask, is front and rear both equal? Well, if front and rear both are equal, then it means that there is only one element in the queue and even that has been pulled out by the previous line x is equal to a front. So if front is equal to rear, we are going to make front equal to rear equal to minus 1. Initialize them again. Make them minus 1 to claim that the queue is empty. Isn't it? But if this is false, if front and rear are not equal, then we will land in else and say front should become front plus 1. Because if front and rear are not equal, then check this diagram. If front and rear are not equal, this is where front is, this is where rear is. And imagine just now we have pulled out the front person. And front and rear are not equal. You can, you can just check this, isn't it? Front and rear are so far from each other. Then you can say front is front plus one. All right, this is fine. Isn't it? But what if front and rear are at same place? Suppose we have a queue like this where front and rear, oh, I'm so sorry for this. Front and rear are at the same place. There is only one element such as 50 and you are even pulling that element out. Then how can you say front is front plus one? Next element is not there. Then you make both front and rear abruptly minus one. Front and rear will be made minus one. Claiming that the queue is empty. I hope you understood this. Why we are doing all this. Why there is an additional if inside the delete function. You can put it in English like this that after deleting the value if that was the only value left out then make the queue empty by making front and rear minus one otherwise else appoint the next person as front most and by the way after this if after this if return x which you pulled out and that's the end of delete so after deleting 50 front and rear both will become minus one. Yes, both are minus one. So what if you call delete now? Now that's funny. How can you call delete on this queue where queue does not contain any value? Don't worry, in early in the delete, we are having a if statement. If front is minus one and that is true now, so it will print queue under flow. Queue is empty, isn't it? Now, that's how insert and delete are designed on linear queue. But we are not leaving the video yet. Let's come back to insert. 
Okay, now what we are up to? Let's see. Imagine, imagine we have a queue like this. Just check this queue. Very interesting discussion we are heading to. Imagine the queue is storing 30, 40, 50 as shown. And the value of front is 2 and the value of rear is 4. Observe that. Can we have such a queue? Watch that front is 2. I will better mark it. Front is at second place. And rear is 4. So what about this 0th place and 1st place? What must have happened, you know? Initially, we would be having some values at 0 and 1. But we deleted two values. So as we deleted two values, what happened is front became front plus 1 and front became front plus 1. Recall delete function. Every delete will appoint next person as frontmost. So by the way, this 0th position and 1st position are as good as vacant because we have deleted those values. Isn't it? Imagine such a queue now. And I insist all of you to call insert function which is in front of you, you try to insert 60 in this queue. And to your surprise, this queue will announce it is overflown. Check this if, check this if thoroughly. The if statement over here tries to insert 60, but rear is 4. Observe the diagram. Rear is 4 and size minus 1 is 4. So we say rear has already attained the last position of the array. Rear is 4. Then print Q under Q overflow and else won't execute and it won't allow us to insert a new value. That's really bad, isn't it? Because if 60 could not be inserted after 50, note this because there is no place for 60. There is no place. 60 cannot be inserted here. But obviously, there is a place in front of this array. What about these two elements? These two elements were vacant. But although the two elements are vacant, you are not welcoming 60, isn't it? You are saying that 60 cannot be inserted because rear is already at the last place. Last place. Isn't it? That's linear queue for you. That's that word linear. Why? Why linear? Because rear can increase only by 1 every time. If it is 4, it can become 5. If it is 5, it can become 6. And the elements are getting inserted linearly, one after the other. Elements cannot get inserted circularly. That is, if 60 was supposed to be inserted and there was no place for 60, we could have checked, we could have checked the other end of the array where the elements are getting deleted. And if there was a place at the other end of the array, we could say, no, 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 Q is not yet full and we could have inserted 60 at 0th place. If this is done, what I am explaining now, then we say Q has a circular nature and we will say it is a circular Q. But right now it is not happening because such a rigid condition has been written inside the insert function. Hello rear, if you are equal to size minus 1, if you are at the last place of the array, then simply print overflow. Isn't it? So this is a disadvantage of linear queue. Disadvantage is it may announce overflow even if, even if there is a place vacant in the queue. Height is, suppose you call delete two more times on this queue. So 30 will be deleted and front will become 3. You know that, isn't it? Next element becomes frontmost and 40 is deleted and front becomes 4. So now you observe front which was 2 now becomes 4. Now watch that this queue is almost empty. There is only one element, 50 in this queue. And it is almost empty. But even then, when you call insert on this queue, you will get over error. That's bad, isn't it? That's what linear queue is. And that is insert and delete operations on linear queue. Thank you very much.